So we'll be starting with new standard that is accounting standard 12, which talks about accounting for government grants. Accounting for government grants. Again, we'll try to understand everything with the help of our chart book itself. First, the scope people name itself is saying accounting for government grants. If you have received something from the government, if you have received something from the government, how to account that is the scope of accounting standard 12. So normally you receive from the government or you pay the government. You pay tax to the government. No? The government also will pay us something. No? Sometimes the government also can give you some subsidies. Like we saw in COVID times, almost central state, everybody gave some relief. Everybody, this package, that package, relief package, so many was given, right? So like that, under 100. Even governments will have various schemes. So if you fall under that particular scheme, you may get some subsidiaries or some incentives from the government. If at all you have received that, how to account that is the scope of this particular standard. Okay now, easy. All right. So if these days, if you just check, government is promoting the MSME sectors, medium scale enterprise, whoever is into that, right? They are getting some extra incentive, meaning they're getting a loan at a lower rate, correct? Like this, they're getting some extra benefit. So it's possible that government will have many incentives and you will fall and it, it is also general and practically also it happens like take example uh let's say uh tata limited wants to set up a car manufacturing unit they want to set up a car manufacturing unit let's say in karnataka tata limited approached karnataka government and told i will set up the car manufacturing unit in karnataka which will generate fifty thousand jobs it will give employment opportunities to 50,000 people. So it's a it's done on a very large scale. Now, what do you think Karnataka government will say? Please, please come. We were looking for players like you. Because more and more employment opportunity gets generated, standard of living will increase. So accordingly, the state car development activities also will happen at a faster pace, etc. etc. Yes or no? Now Tata Limited may ask one question to Karnataka government say, Why should I come to you? I'll go to Gujarat. I'll go to Tamil Nadu. I can go to other states also. Why should I come to you? What is the benefit for me? Then our uh, Karnataka government told, come, I will give you land at free of cost. I will give you 100 acres of land at free of cost. Start your factory. 100 acres of land at free of cost. Come and start your factory. So that 100 acres of land which the Tatas have received is what we refer to as government. So it is possible that governments also from time to time can give some components to the entity. If at all, you as an entity, if you have received anything, how to account is all the scope of waste. Easy. Can we now dive into this topic, sir? Okay. Meaning you all, I believe you already understood. Hmm? Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Next one. Uh, the next one is the broad accounting approaches. Sir, as far as government grant is concerned, no, there are two bases of accounting, two broad approaches. One, we call it as capital approach. Another one is income. Capital approach or income approach meaning if the grant received if there is a keyword if you possible try to remember this ideally if you can remember it will be great if grants received are in the nature of promoters contribution if grants received are in the nature of promoters contribution then we say such a grant is a capital grant and it should be shown not it should grant means obviously it's an income result. Now, when you pay tax to the government, you will show the provision for tax in P&L. Yes, so sir, as an expense. So, if you are receiving something from the government, ideally you should show it as what? As an income in P&L. Correct? Now, that's the common understanding. If you are paying tax, you are showing it as an expense. So, if you are receiving something from the government, it looks like an income. Income should be shown in P&L. But hang on. AS12 says, first check the nature of that grant received. If the grant received is in the capital nature meaning if it's a capital grant don't transfer it to p and l but show it as capital all capital grants or capital income where will you show under capital reserve so show it as capital reserve in your balance sheet meaning show this capital reserve as a reserves and surplus in your under shareholders funds as capital reserve not as p and l 
easy if it is not a capital grant any grant which is not a capital grant automatically becomes your revenue grant or income grant all this will be transferred of where to pay bill okay that is not so can you give an example sir one company x limited they set up a factory in a remote area in one remote location they have set up a factory because so obviously if you are setting up any factory in a remote uh, area so that standard of living on that area will be same or it will improve the people in that area will start getting employment opportunities their income will increase etc etc so their living condition also will increase so the government told i'm very happy with your initiative they want to set up a uh, exclamated is setting up a factory government told take 10 crore rupees take 10 crore rupees and establish your factory. they have not yet established the factory they want to establish the factory and government told take 10 crore now you think isn't this like a capital that you have received from the government yes no sir normally the business is started by people called promoters we say yes no? promoters are the people who start the business correct no sir so this 10 crore that you have received from the government isn't it like promoter ka contribution because promoter when will he why will he contribute the money to start the business here government is giving you the money to start set up a particular factory that means whatever grant you have received no it is like what promoters contribution meaning it is like capital but you can't show it as capital because are you giving shares to the government huh? no because you're not government just give this 10 crore rupees are you giving 10 crore worth shares to the government no hence what is this your regular thing or it's like a once in a blue moon kind of thing so this is a this grant is in the nature of promoters contribution hence as12 says don't show it in p and l but show it as what capital reserve in your batch that's all. okay sir any doubt no so if it is not a capital grant then it automatically becomes what sort of grant income grant or also we can call it as a revenue grant all revenue grant are transferred where to p and l so where will you show sir either you can show it under other income you know, we already discussed PNL and consolidated PNL. What are the categories? Revenue from operations. Below that, other income. So, whatever grant you have received, whatever revenue grant you have received, no, you can show it as an other income in PNL, or you can reduce it from the related expense. Meaning, let's say you are giving some training to the employees, and government told because government told if you train the employees on GST, I will give you fifty thousand rupees grant. If you train the employees, I will give you 50,000 grant. Okay. So the amount that you pay to the employees, is it a once in a blue moon thing or a regular thing? The employee expense that you pay, that an employee, the organization pays to the employee. It's a normal expenditure. Correct or no? So that means government is giving you some money towards that normal expenditure. Correct or no? So this 50,000, either you can show it under other income or to employees what does the company pay salary let us say company is paying a salary of 5 lakh to the employees company is paying a salary of 5 lakh. instead of showing 50,000 as an other income you can reduce it from the salary expense meaning reduce 50,000 from salary expense and salary expense will become four and a half lakh so that is the two presentations acceptable either you show it as other income or you can reduce it from the related expense whatever is the call done sir any problem so these are the two approaches need a minute or go for the next one they'll give you a case study so you don't have to mug up only few key keywords if you can remember that's great okay <clears throat> all right maybe we'll have a quick recap so what is the standard name accounting standard 12 which talks about accounting for government grants so if you have received some incentives or subsidies or whatever from the government then how should we account as a scope of as 12 Broadly, the grant received are categorized under two categories, which are capital grant, revenue grant, or capital approach, income approach. So, when will you treat it as a capital grant or capital approach? If the grants are like promoter's contribution, meaning grants received are in the nature of promoter's contribution. In that case, what will you do? Whatever grant you have received, you will show it under capital reserve. Meaning, if you have received a grant of 1 crore, then the journal entry you will pass us bank account debit 1 crore 
बैंक अकाउंट डेबिट वन करोर टू कैपिटल रिजर्व अकाउंट वन लाइक दैट Okay, that's what we will mean. This capital reserve will be shown under reserves and surplus under again shareholders funds in your balance sheet. That's your presentation. So any grant which is not a capital grant automatically becomes revenue grant, meaning you follow indirectly income approach. So such grant where will you show in P and L account? Two possible approaches, two acceptable approaches as per ES twelve. One is to show it as separate income under other income category or reduce it from the related. Expense. Okay, normally grants no will come with some conditions. Normally government will not give grant and keep quiet. They'll put some conditions. To fulfill those conditions, you may end up incurring some cost. So either show the grant as a separate income or reduce it from the related expense, whatever it is. For that related expense, we will get as and we go and do in the case studies. Fine, as sir. Next one. Recognition criteria. Sir, if you want to recognize the grant, there are two recognition criteria. One, as we told you, normally grants don't come unconditional. Generally, there will be some condition. It's not necessary. It is. It should be conditions attached, not mandatory. But may majority of the grants that you receive from the government will have some conditions. The conditions could be whatever. Okay, it could be like uh, promoters should not sell their equity shares for the next three years. Employment number of employees who are getting trained in the organization or working in the organization should not fall below five thousand. No foreign investor should invest in this particular company. Okay, like this, and conditions could be umpteen. Whatever is that? That is just a negotiation. Hmm? All right. So coming back to the recognition criteria. So first recognition criteria is if there is any conditions attached to the grant, no company should have a reasonable assurance that they will fulfill those conditions. It's not necessary that you have to wait till the time condition is fulfilled. The day company gets a reasonable assurance that, or get the confidence that they will fulfill the conditions. Let's say com company has put the condition saying, uh, for the next three years, headcount should not fall below thousand. Headcount meaning the number of employees. So the number of employee count you no know, should not fall below three thousand rupees or a thousand. Or how many years? Three years. That is what the government put some condition, and they gave the grant now only. They they gave the grant in the year one beginning and they put the condition for how many years? Three years. Okay, they gave you let's say ten lakh rupees with this condition. Now, should the company wait for three years to recognize this grant income? No, you don't. It's not necessary. If company feels, if company is confident that for the next three years their headcount or the number of employees will not fall below thousand, that means they can recognize this grant in year one itself. That is what first condition is trying to say. It's not necessary condition has to be fulfilled. It is necessary that organization should have a reasonable assurance that they will fulfill those conditions in future. The day you get that reasonable confidence, go ahead and account it. Okay. Ah, you are about two steps ahead of me, or few steps ahead of. Me. In that case, he's saying if condition breached means what will what will happen. Sir, with the condition, the government gave you the grant. If if the condition is breached or if it is violated, then government will take back the grant, which we call it as grants refund. We'll come. We have two problems also. Slowly, slowly. Okay. All right. That is. One. Can grant be low interest loan also? Yes. Interest free loan, grant at lower interest is also a grant. That just that those problems are not covered here. It will come in CA fine. Okay. Yes, it is also a grant to answer your question. Correct. Okay, so first condition we are comfortable. One is what, sir? You should have a reasonable assurance that you will fulfill the conditions. Second one is you should have a reasonable assurance that grant itself you will receive. During elections, they say no. We will give you a star, no, moon, no, Neptune, no. Everything they will make promises. Afterwards, ah, oh, I told I, <laughs> that should not be the case. So you should also have a reasonable assurance that you will receive the grant. So how will you establish this? Maybe a mail confirmation, maybe an agreement, okay? Maybe bar past records could be anything. But you should have a reasonable assurance that not only you will fulfill the condition, but also that you will receive the grant. I am saying Congress, eh? Hey. <laughs> no Congress, BJP, and all. I would not go into that and all. Okay, whatever. Okay, this is. I'll come back to topic. <laughs> Let's not go into politics. Yeah. 
So are we fine with this? So this is your two recognition criteria. The day both the conditions are uh, satisfied, that day you can go ahead and recognize the grant. Doesn't matter whether you have received it or not, still you can go ahead and receive it. Okay, people. Any doubt, people? Uh -huh. Huh? No, sir. No, sir. Oh, okay. Move on to the next one. Let me know if you need some time, I'll wait. Or if you are on the same page and if you have got it, I'll keep moving forward. Hmm? Now this chart book approach is okay, no? Earlier what I used to do is when I used to write it down, that used to take around 15-20 minutes extra. So I thought I can save that little bit by doing the charts. And you can also get to know how you can revise with the help of charts. So that's the reason I've devised this. It's it's all right with you? Yes. Comfortable, no? Or you want to write down and you want me to write as well? Or this is okay? Okay, lazy people. <laughs> same, same as expected answer only. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I thought it is a little more colorful and color is something which we generally also gets a little attracted, makes a little interesting. So I thought, okay, let me try this approach this time. Normally, I only revise from chart book. All the concepts I do it, either write it down or I explain from that. But uh, I thought, okay, once let me try this. New syllabus, so new approach. Correct. <laughs> it will be available. <laughs> I need it. It's just that that's another three topics I've not yet reviewed yet. At all. No time only. Now. I'll tell you. It will take some time, another two, three weeks at least, minimum. Anyway, but anyways, the revision video is available. You can revise with the help of that. Again, this is not relevant for recorded ways. You chill. By the time you watch this video, everything will be available. <laughs> okay, the next one. Look at this. Oh, maybe I think we'll take question number two. Hang on. Come to question number two, people. You will answer this question to me. Question number two. Santosh Limited has received a grant of 8 crores from the government for setting up a factory in the backward area. Stop there itself. Normal revenue grant or capital grant? Capital grant. Because grants received is in the nature of promoter's contribution. So that means this grant where will you show? Under capital risk. Great. Out of this grant, uh, the great company distributed two crores as Dude, look at that audacity i tell you they told they will set up a factory <laughs> and they received eight crore grant and they gave all of those eight crores did they utilize to construct factory or gave it off as dividend uh, okay the company distributed two crore as dividend also santosh limited oh this is there oh. Oh, this i can't explain one second wait that concept we have not done check Multiple things they bought it. Mm -hmm. Okay, at least one minute. Hang on, sir. This concept we have not done. At least next one I'll see you. Oh, I think next one we can take it up. Sorry, I didn't read that second part. First part, you know, second part I've not discussed, so I'll put that on hold. Hang on. Second one, maybe I'll read off only one second. Wait. Oh, I think this we can. Top and top limited has set up its business in designated backward area, which entitles the company to Received from the government of India a subsidy of 20% of the cost of investment. So the condition is that if we set up a factory or a business in backward area, we will receive how much ever we have invested of that 20% we will receive as subsidy from the government. I mean this 20% is subsidy is nothing but government grant received for what? Setting up of a factory. Again, what sort of a grant? Capital grant. Again, received grants are in the nature of promoters contribution. Having fulfilled all the conditions, the company on its investment of 50 crore. How much has the company invested? 50 crore. So how much grant they will receive? 20% of the cost of investment. Cost of investment is 50 crore means 50 crore ka 20% is 10 crore. So 10 crore you will receive as a subsidy from the government. Okay. In fact, uh, the company on its investment of 50 crore in capital asset received 10 crore rupees from the government. So they received also. Great. Company wants to treat this receipt as an item of revenue and reduce loss on PNL account for the year ended 31st March 2017. They are saying this year we made full loss. So we will treat this grant as an income. So that income and this loss will be set off. So that is what they want to do. Be acceptable, not acceptable. Not acceptable because these are the grants received in the nature of promoter's contribution. So can you transfer it to PNL or show it under capital receipt? Show it under Capitalism. So, accounting treatment desired by the company is not correct. Can we put up, put up, right? Question 3. Solution. 
Oh. As per accounting standard 12, accounting for government grant, accounting for government grants, comma, grants received, grants received in the nature of, grants received in the nature of promoter's contribution, grants received in the nature of promoter's contribution should be, is capital grant can I write? Is a capital grant, is a capital grant and to be shown under and to be shown as capital reserve, to be shown as capital reserve under shareholders funds can I directly write? Under shareholders funds. In the present case, company wants to, in the present case, company desires to transfer this to, to transfer this grant to P&L, to transfer this grant to P&L. Conclusion is what? Acceptable, not acceptable. Hence, accounting treatment, hence accounting treatment desired by the company. Hence, accounting treatment desired by the company is not correct, is not correct as per, as per accounting standard 12 ka provisions or as per AS12. Para numbers you need not remember. Okay, each standard no, will have a para. Like we had that AS11 ka para 46A exemption. That is just para numbers and all difficult to remember. Don't worry about that. Just write the main provisions that's good not that if you remember it is wrong it is just that this content is mentioned in that a standard all these are gadgeted documents no so they will number para one etc clause one like this they will give a reference a little difficult to remember so you don't have to worry about that if you can remember it great yeah not required it's okay just remember the standard name and number and the keywords of provision that is sufficient since para 46a is one specific thing i would say that would be better if you can remember if it's important, I'll tell you, general not required. Finish now. Okay. Next, coming back to the this thing. All right. Next is, check this, sir. Non-monetary grant received. Sir, monetary grant means, monetary means those components whose value is fixed. Non-monetary means value fluctuates. Sir, in the previous case, in the previous question we did, how did we receive the grant? In the form of cash or check, that is what sort of a grant? It's a monetary grant, yes or no? In this case, they are saying if a non-monetary grant is received, meaning instead of giving cash or check, company gave you some asset, some property, plant and equipment or some intangible assets, etc, etc, if this is given. Then in that case, what to do? In my example, if you just check, Tata got what from Karnataka government? Land at free of cost. Yes or no? So land is a monetary or a non-monetary? Non-monetary. If that is received, means what to do is this particular approach. Okay. First check, how have you received that non-monetary at free of cost or at concessional value? Could be anything. So suppose if you have received this non-monetary grant like land or some other PP for that matter at free of cost, then show that asset in your books. Have you paid any money? No. But still, though you have received it at free of cost, record it in your books at nominal value. The nominal value could be 10 rupees, 100 rupees, 1000, whatever. This is only for the sake of disclosure. It is only for the sake of disclosure. So you received some land at free of cost. Simply you can write land account debit to capital reserve 100 rupees or land account debit to P&L 100 rupees it is fine. 100, 10, 1000 whatever, whatever is a nominal value for you. This is only for the sake of disclosure because you have received one asset. No? So let that asset get reflected in your books of accounts. So to bring in that they have just brought in this approach. Okay sir. Is it nominal value has to be 100? No. It could be anything which company deserves. Done now. Can I go to the next one? Okay, suppose if you have not received this non-monetary grant at free of cost, but at concessional value, meaning let's say, 
that land ka na sir market value is let's say 10 crore rupees we are a company we have received some land from the government government has allotted some land the market value of the land is 10 crores government told pay 2 crores that is sufficient pay only 2 crores its market value is 10 but government told give me only i will not give it at free of cost this time i will give it to you at a lesser value so we have to pay 2 crores and we will buy the land so in this case the journal entry will be land account debit we have purchased this no okay how much are we paying market value is how much 10 crore but we paid 10 crores or only 2 crore what is this 2 crore full value or concessional value so if you have received any non-monetary granted concessional value recorded at the concessional value itself meaning you will debit land account to the extent of 2 crore you have paid this no so to bank account 2 crore if you have not yet paid right to government account or meaning to payable account 2 crore then when you pay it it will be payable account debit to bank account like this this is the, this is the company any any doubt or okay Ah, hey, no, nothing to pay under. Where to pay under? Land, how will it go to pay under? Land will come and pay under or balance sheet? Da? Land will come and balance sheet. Okay. So, yes. This is not your, uh, uh, your monetary grant. This is the grant in the nature of non-monetary grants. Okay. So, basically, again, the concept is if you have received any non-monetary grants, like any asset, could be land, missionary, whatever. First, check how have you received this grant. Act free of cost or at concessional if you have received it at free of cost can we ignore the recording or record it record at what value concessional or nominal value itself could be 10 rupee 1 rupee 100 rupees whatever just record it that should be good enough and other case if you have recorded at a, if you are uh, if you have received a non monetary grant at a concessional value meaning at a lesser price then record that asset at a concessional value itself by passing this particular journal this is this concept okay Uh, as per AS 16, no. As per IND AS 23, yes. Same thing is there in your CA final also. CA final, IND AS recognizes that if you have received anything at nominal value, you can record it at nominal value, concessional value or at market value. IND AS run big on, big on market value also. So, as per IND AS acceptable, as per accounting standard, not acceptable. IND AS still is on the little conservative side. So, that way. Mm, same point is there next also. But one extra thing will get added there. Done now. Huh. Yeah. He's saying we have received this land and we want to sell it off. Can we sell it? Sir, we have to check the government grant generally come with some conditions. The condition could also be saying don't sell this land for the next five years. If there is a condition like that and still if you sell it, then you'll have to give it back. They took it back or they will, if you have already sold the land like that, they will collect that value from you the penalty could be imposed then you'll have to look at the how have you received the grant what are the conditions attached to it if there is no conditions attached government told take it much enjoy whatever you want to do you do it then you can sell it rent it whatever you want to do, do it no but no problem there tax is a different aspect that is your ltcg stcg that is a as12 and your ltcg stcg are completely different concept that is your normal okay don't bring in there here. okay that is your normal tax provisions which you do your accounting standards runs, I mean accounting and all runs on accounting standards, guidance, note, etc, etc. Tax runs on Income Tax Act ka provisions. On many things, it will not match. Okay, that you don't have to establish the connection. One standard tries to establish that connection, which I will discuss with you after a week or so. For now, not required. Okay. All right. Now, I think we can take up that first question. Let's see. I think we put one on hold, no? Question two, Santosh Garu. Ah. Uh, sir, recording is nominal, so no depreciation will arise. Correct, correct. In this previous case, you recorded land at what value I told? At nominal value, you know. Your nominal value 10 rupees, 100 rupees. On this, don't depreciate. On land, any which way depreciation will not arise. But if it's a building, depreciation will arise, but don't depreciate this because you are showing this as for only for your record purpose. No need to do. First, you are showing 1 rupee. 1 rupee also you will depreciate. Huh? Not required. Depreciation not required. This is only for the sake of control aspect you are bringing this correct point is he accepted valid second question santosh received a grant of 8 crore from the government for setting up of a factory we got to know this this is what sort of a grant capital grant out of this grant company distributed 2 crore as dividend acceptable not acceptable 
not accepted. The one part of the question which we know the answer to it already. Next, also Santosh Limited received land free of cost from the state government. So one second, if you have received land is what sort of a grant? First of all, this one minute, this 8 crore dot what you have received, this is what sort of a grant? You have received 8 crore rupees. You have received 8 crore means when they say it is received in the form of cash or check. What sort of a grant is this? This is a monetary grant. So if you have monetary grants, directly you will use capital approach or income approach. That is the basis. Okay. All. What about this uh, land that you have received at free of cost? This land that you have received from government is what sort of a grant? Non-monetary grant. If you have received it at free of cost means what should you do? Record a non-monetary grant at uh, nominal. Could be 1, 10, 100, whatever. Yes. What has the company done? Check. But it is not recorded at all in the books as no money has been sent. Company is saying we did not spend any money. So we will not show that asset. You need to comment. That's all. With respect to both. Both are fine or both are wrong? Okay. One, they paid off dividend. That is absolutely not acceptable and two land they had to show it at nominal value which they did not do so can we record that okay question two hmm? have they told we transfer this eight crores to p and l anywhere no. that means have they done any incorrect accounting treatment no but they have utilized this grant for not setting up a factory but for payment of Different. That is the violation. So, I will call out that. Okay. If you want one more way of practice. Grants received in the nature of promoter's contribution is a capital grant. That point can be write it for one more. So, write it. Not really required but just for your reference. As per AS 12, comma. Grants received. Grants received in the nature of grants received in the nature of promoter's contribution is a capital grant is a capital grant to be shown to be shown as capital reserve under shareholders funds Also, you can write also non monetary grant, non monetary grant received at non monetary grant received at free of cost, of, received at free of cost should be recorded, should be recorded at nominal value. You need not tell what is that nominal value. For your reference, I wrote it in the chart book as 110, etc, etc. You can stop that. That it should be recorded at nominal value. These are the two provisions. In the present case, in the present case, company distributed dividend out of grant receipt. Distributed dividend out of grant received and did not record did not record land received at free of cost so finally what is the conclusion company has violated as pro as 12 provisions can i write company has violated accounting standard 12 ka provisions. Hmm. Oh, next one, question number, I think four also we can take it up. How would you treat the following in the accounts in accordance with AS 12 government grants? First, 35 lakh rupees 35 lakh received stop there only rupees 35 lakh received means non-monetary grant or monetary monetary grant 
from the local authority for providing medical facilities to employees. Since the company is giving some medical facilities, whatever medical facilities, could be insurance or regular hospital checkup, whatever. So since the company is giving medical facilities, government gave us a grant of 35 lakhs. So now you tell me, sir, is this a capital grant or routine part and parcel of our business? This is part and parcel of our business. So what sort of a grant is this? This is a revenue grant, can I say? Revenue grant to be accounted under what approach? Capital approach or income approach? Income approach. So where will this grant go to? The end Under where? Under that two options. Either separately show it as other income or reduce it from the related expense. What is the related expense here? Employee expense, right? From the salary, you can reduce 35 lakhs. Those are the acceptable treatments. You want me to give or given here? Is that okay? Dictate, right? Or is this okay? So that's what our year just said. Maybe once I'll read out the solution, let me know if you are comfortable with that. Rupees 35 lakh received from local authority is a grant received in the nature of revenue. Grant. Or simply you can write this is a revenue grant. And what should you do for revenue grant? It should be presented as a credit in PNL account under other income. Show this grant under other income. Or alternatively, 35 lakhs may be deducted from the related expense. That is your employee benefit expense, which is nothing but your salary. Right off. Okay. Uh, right. When when it comes to this and all that, they generally give it for two to three marks. So don't waste your time writing too many provisions. So we can directly write the conclusion itself. So what will you write? Grants received or grant received of rupees thirty five lakh in relation to what, sir? In relation to medical facilities, huh? in relation to medical facilities given to given to employees is what sort of a grant is a revenue grant or simply you can write this is a revenue grant you can start like this also. is a revenue grant and revenue grant can be shown can be shown under can be shown as an can be shown as an income can be shown as an income under which category under other income category under other income category of PNL or it can be can be reduced or deducted from from related expense from related expense and what is the related expense over here that is the salary cost can I call it that that is the employee salary can I write employee salary cost for a moment somebody thought right sir they told and they left off huh? and then I saw that it's a different different person <clears throat> I think everybody is in festival mode already, I think, today. Hmm? Tomorrow onwards. No, today only they are already there. Turnout is little less than compared to the usual turnout. Hmm? Higher purchase and all is not there. It's removed from your syllabus now. I think it's pushed to CA foundation. I'm not sure. It was there before. A lot of things has gone. Okay. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, Next one. Rupees 100 lakh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let me you tell all over that become. Hey, listen, listen. Shh, 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 shh. Rupee, rupees 100 lakh received a subsidy from central government for setting up of a unit in backward area. Stop there. What sort of a grant, first of all? No, 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 first of all, it's a monetary grant received for setting up of a factory in a backward area. Now, revenue grant or capital grant? Capital grant. Capital grant should be shown under capital risk. Subsidy is in effect, so nice problem. Subsidy is in the nature of promoter's contribution. That means where you should show. You should show it under capital risk. I think this will take off. Okay, no, I've already written two problems, same thing. Right. Okay, coming back to the next concept. Okay. Oh. 
two more concepts in fact one more and then we are done i mean conceptually done we have few problems around that's it okay huh <laughs> Again, you want to tell Chintu, right? Hmm? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> what is today's target? Today's target is this standard plus next standard. Recording it is. Okay. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, both. Yeah, yeah. We Recording is happening. Yeah, listen. Mm. <laughs> uh, next one. Monetary grant received for a specific fixed set. Sir, monetary grant have you already recorded? Yeah. Monetary grant, no, broad basis is either a capital approach or income approach. Okay. That is for normal monetary grants. However, if you have received any monetary grant and if it relates to any specific fixed asset meaning your property plan and equipment in that case what to do are you able to identify the previous one and this one the previous one this here what we wrote right this is for what sir this is for the general generally if you have received the grant you will read it accounted as what either under capital approach or income approach this is for your general monetary grants however if you have received monetary grant if it relates to a specific fixed asset like let's say you purchased the machinery for 50 lakh rupees you purchased a machinery for 50 lakh rupees. Government told because you purchased machinery, because you, let's say we imported machinery from Japan to produce certain goods. Government told, I'm very happy that you are producing high quality product because this machinery is, can produce high quality product. So because of that, I will give you 5 lakh rupees grant. Why is this grant coming in? Because we purchased a machinery. That means this is grant is directly associated with the machinery. So this, what sort of a grant is this? Did the government give you machinery here? No, you purchased machinery and because you purchased machinery, you got some monetary grant. So this monetary grant specifically relates to a particular machinery in this my example. So if that is the case, means what we have to do? Two acceptable methods of accounting is permissible and this is popular as far as the examination is concerned from this particular topic. I just named the method, I will not go through whatever i've written because all this whatever i've written is problem specific adjustment if i go through it now you will not understand we will work out one problem then maybe i'll revisit the chart it will make sense okay so the two acceptable methods are one is asset cost reduction method another one is deferred income method asset cost reduction method another one is deferred government income method or simply you can call it as deferred income method let's do a thing let's directly apply it in one question and then come back to the chart in question number one now we'll go for question number one okay look at this question everybody z limited purchased a fixed asset for 50 lakhs which with an estimated useful life of five years salvage value of five all this data is helpful to care for us to calculate depreciation maybe on purchase of asset government granted it a grant of rupees 10 on purchase of these assets government gave us a grant and how did they give this 10 lakh in the form of machinery or in the form of cash so this is what sort of a grant this is a monetary grant is it related to any asset yes this is specifically related to one fixed asset okay pass journal entries in the books of company for the first two years if the grant is deducted from the value of fixed asset and when the grant is treated as deferred income method. both the methods may they are asking you the journal entry I'll, we'll, I'll explain it to you as and when I'm doing it. Question number one. Uh, you can choose to copy or you can take it off your call. I'll, I'll present it. First, first scenario is, as, what is the first method I told sir? Asset cost reduction method. Asset cost reduction method. Okay, I'll show you one another way of presenting the journal entries. If you're having any shortage of time, try to follow that. In CA Intermediate, generally, study material does not use that approach of presentation and journal entry. In case you feel you have only five minutes, you have to pass journal entry for three to four years, you can try to use this format. Okay, now, so have it for your reference. How many years did they ask the journal entries of? 
So how this work, journal entry works is it works in columnar format. Particulars, year one, year two, like that. So instead of passing the journal entry for both the years separately, because in many cases, no journal entries for year one and year two will be same. Only amount will change. So by following this columnar approach, you don't have to write the entries again and again. We generally use this for CA final, but CA intermediate may have not seen study material use this approach. So you probably keep this as an emergency presentation. Okay, in my view, it is acceptable. If I were the evaluator, I would give marks. Okay, but uh, anyways, so we will not comment on that. Okay, now. So they only asked for two years. So we'll only present it for two years. Do you want to first uh, listen or co copy simultaneously? One approach everyone will follow so that it will be easy. Uh, simultaneously, uh, someone is saying listen. <laughs> Okay. All right, maybe listen off then copy. Hmm? That will be better. I'll give you some time. Okay, it's easy only. Just pay attention, or maybe better would be just listen off. It'd be better. So that one problem, if you get to know, no, like based on this concept, we have a next four five question is based on this concept. So maybe important pay attention to this. So we'll pass it from the beginning, sir. What did the Z Limited do? They purchased a fixed asset. What's the journal entry for fixed asset purchase? Instead of fixed asset, can I call it as PP? As in property, plant, and property plant and equipment account account debit to to bank account how much did i buy this fixed asset for question number one no 50 lakhs okay narration is being fixed asset purchased or being pp purchased Okay. So first journal entry, second journal entry. Sir, after purchasing fixed asset, what did you receive? You received a grant of how much? 10 lakh rupees from the government. Have you already received? Yes. Now, which method? Look at the name of the method. Asset cost reduction method. Meaning whatever grant you will receive. No. Okay, you will reduce it from the cost of the asset hence the method name asset cost reduction method so have you received this grant yes so that means the journal entry will be bank account debit how much did you receive 10 so bank account debit 10 lakh so since you are reducing this grant from the asset cost reduction method asset has debit balance to reduce it you shall credit so you'll write here can i write here pp bank account debit to pp account so your narration you'll write being grant, grant received accounted. Or you can also go further and say grant received adjusted from the cost of the asset or grant received reduced from the cost of the asset. Like that or simply you can write this and stop it there. Any doubt till uh, first two entries anybody or straightforward? Okay. Sir, did you purchase the asset in second year also? Did you purchase the asset in second year also? No. So will this first entry come in the year two? Did you receive grant in year two or year two also or only in the first year? So in the second year, will any journal entry come for grant received? No. So second year column blank. Okay. Can I go for the next one? All right. Next to the year end. Sir, have you used the asset? They have asked for the first two years. No. So have you used has one year? If one year has passed means you have utilized that asset. If you have utilized the asset means you need to charge. Depreciation. What's the journal entry for depreciation, sir? Depreciation account debit. Correct? Huh? To what account? To property, plant and equipment. Okay, now listen up. Check here. Now, sir, hey, pay attention, people. Sir, you purchase the asset. How do you get depreciation under SLM method, sir? Is it original cost really or carrying amount? We saw that this. So SLM method may the formula actually is the books will use the formula original cost because they calculate depreciation only for the first year. For first year, original cost and carrying amount are same. But in reality, the formula is is it original cost or carrying amount? Carrying amount. minus residual value or salvage value divided by life or remaining useful life. Remaining useful life. Yes, no. Or check, sir. You purchase the fixed asset for what value initially? 50 lakh. So the cost or carrying amount is how much? 50 lakh. Yes. But hang on. 
immediately after you purchased you received the grant and whatever grant you received of 10 lakh you adjusted it from the cost of the asset that means is the cost of carrying amount of the asset really 10 lakh or it got reduced by 10 or is it really 50 lakh or got reduced by 10 it got reduced by 10 so the carrying amount of the property plan and equipment is only 40 lakhs any doubt easy okay next sir next we need to deduct salvage value or residual value have they given that yes salvage value or residual value is given to be again file so what will you do reduce file lakh again comfortable divided by life what is the life sir life they've given it to be five years so divided by five years how much is this so depreciation is seven lakhs okay g so the journal entry is this since it's a straight line method, any of the parameters changed off? Is there any change in residual value in year two? No. Is there any change in the useful life in year two? No. If parameters are same, meaning if your residual value, useful life, etc., etc., if it is same, then the depreciation in the second year also will be same. I mean, second year also same journal entry for the same amount. So by following this approach, you don't have to write the narration entry and all again and again. It will save you some time. See, one minute useful life not change a lot saying okay second year if you want to calculate depreciation if you want to calculate depreciation how will you calculate for carrying amount what is the carrying amount initially you bought it for 50 lakhs you adjusted the cost of the asset by 10 lakh due to the grant okay now so carrying amount was how much 40 lakh. first year you reduced depreciation how much 7 lakh. because we want carrying amount at the beginning of year two no Okay, like this. This is the cost now or carrying amount now. Okay, now minus salvage value. Is there any change in salvage value or same? Salvage value is still same, which is file. Correct. Huh? So, this is your carrying amount. This is your salvage value divided by remaining useful life. For the second year, remaining useful life is 5 or it's 4. One year has already passed. That means this is 4. If you calculate, how much you're getting? Obviously, 7. Is there a necessary to calculate this? No. That's it. So, remaining useful life, when I say it is changed, instead of 4, let's say it became 7. Or instead of 4, it became, let's say, 2. We have done such question in AS10. No? That's what I meant by useful life has changed. Meaning, has the useful life ka estimate changed? That is what I am trying to specifically say. Okay, now, so is this calculation necessary or not required? Not required. Can I cut this off or let it be off? Okay, leave on. Some of them may be required. Maybe. Okay. So, entry is over. Narration is pretty straightforward, being depreciation account. All right. Yes, depreciation will be calculated at the end of year two, correct? End of year one and year two. So, under this approach, you don't have to call out the dates there. Okay, you can just write go on numbering. Or if you want for your purpose, you can also call this at. That means all these entries will come at year end. Like that also, if you want, you can calculate. Correct. But no need to call out that specifically mention that it is implied in which way. Then we should reduce two years. Hey, no, 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 no. <laughs> He's saying useful life, we should uh, reduce two years and make it as three. No, no, no. You will account depreciation at the end of year two. Okay, one year has passed. No, So you will calculate this formula. La sir, that logic if you use. He's saying, sir, this should not be, this denominator should not be four, it should be two. Or rather it should be three. Why three? Sir, you bought the asset for when you bought it, it was oh, useful life was five years. You are calculating depreciation at the end of second year. So, how many years is over? How many years is over? Two years is over. No. So, remaining useful life should be three. Sir, that logic if you apply, this also should not be five. It should be four. Because first year also, huh, you will calculate depreciation at year beginning or year end. <laughs> year end. <laughs> no. We will calculate the depreciation at year beginning. Like this, this is how this formula works. Remaining useful life is calculated at a particular year beginning. Then you account that depreciation at the year end like that. Okay, now <clears throat> that way if you do one whole year, if you take four years, no, you will depreciate this asset only for four years. <laughs> okay, I like that. So that is not the way it is. Mm, valid, valid only, but yeah, hope you got that. Mm? Okay, all right. Sir, depreciation is an expense. Where will that expense go off to? So the next entry will be P and L account debit to P and L account debit to depreciation account. How much sir? 7 lakhs, 7 lakhs. Second year also, same entry for 7 lakhs. Narration is same being depreciation transfer. Ah, totally. 
दिस इज योर असेट कॉस्ट रिडक्शन मेथड एनी डाउट कॉपी वन यूर डन विद वी विल गो फॉर सेकेंड मेथड Straight forward, right? Nothing much fancy. Sir, will we get bouncers in AS questions? Don't. Maybe possible. Not everything. Some maybe yes. <laughs> sure. Ah uh, yes. Have you updated two journal entries now? Okay. Third one showing for. Bouncers can come from any topic. Don't worry. The full paper will not be bounced. Then everybody will get bounced on. Hmm. We'll 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 share. We'll ask them to do it. Huh? I I didn't understand your question. Pa. Uh, no format, not much. And at C intermediate level, it's fine. This is all right. Okay. Can we go for the next method, people? Okay. So this is your asset cost. reduction method okay one minute hang on under asset cost reduction method or thing maybe now we can go back to the chart book and see that if you are following asset cost reduction method when you receive the grant what will happen cost of the asset will reduce because whatever grant you are receiving you are adjusting against the cost of the asset so because of this cost of the asset will reduce if cost reduces means depreciation also will reduce because depreciation is dependent on the cost or carrying amount okay people first point is okay other one is for refund let's not worry about refund for the time can i go for the next one next method is what sir deferred government grant income method or you can simply call it as deferred income method same question we are solving under deferred income method now this is the case b second method deferred deferred income method okay in the same format let's try to present so that is particulars year 1 and year 2 so if they ask for four years then year 3 also you bring in bajume and year 4 also make that as five column now format that hmm. hmm can i start okay so listen again first from the beginning we'll start did you purchase any pp What's the journal entry for PP purchased? PP account debit to bank. How much did you buy this property, plan, and equipment for? Fifty lakhs. First year you purchased, no? So first year this journal entry will come. Second year again did you purchase? No. So will the entry come in the second year? No. So that means I'll write it as nil. Narration. I think first entry you can manage. Okay. The second one. Sir, after purchasing the asset, what happened? You received the grant. So, if you receive the grant, means you will debit what account? Bank account debit. How much lakhs, sir? Ten. One second. Stop here. Which method? Deferred income method. So, can you reduce ten lakhs from the cost of the asset? Is that the one that you are following? No. You are not reducing this from the cost of the asset. Name itself is saying deferred. income method so you will park this in an account called deferred government grant income account or simply you can call it as deferred income account it's all you can either call i don't know what the study material is using yeah it's fine you can either you can use multiple names you can write deferred income account or deferred government grant income account or simply deferred grant account name is all so can i stick to deferred income would you be okay with that so how much is this 10 lakh rupees this is the journal entry for what sir being grant received being grant received account so instead of reducing it from the cost of the asset we will park it in another account called deferred income account or deferred government grant income account like that can i go further oh okay. sir have you used the asset have you utilized the asset yes that means will you get any depre yes what's the journal entry for depreciation sir depreciation account debit to pp account now check the calculation sir you purchase the pp for what value 50 lakh so carrying amount of pp is 50 lakh this 10 lakh under the previous method you reduced it from the cost of the asset here did i reduce 10 lakh from the cost of the asset no so that means can i reduce 10 lakh from here 
So carrying amount or original cost is still 50 under this method. Correct? Huh? So this is your carrying amount. But how do you calculate depreciation? Carrying amount minus salvage value. What is the salvage value here, sir? Salvage value is 5 lakh divided by life. We are at year, year first year now. So the remaining useful life is 5 years. So divided by 5 years. How much is this, sir? Depreciation is 9 lakh. Any parameters change or same? same? In year 2 also, all the parameters are same. So the depreciation amount also will be same. Okay, now, sir. Hmm. So in the previous method, we only got 7 lakh, sir. Hang, hang. So far, good. Okay, the next. Sir, the grant that you have received, you are parked it in which account? Deferred income account. That means deferred income means can you transfer this 10 lakh to PNL in one shot or you need to defer it? You need to defer it over how many years? You need to deferred income means instead of transferring to PNL in one shot, you are transferring to many years PNL. That's all. Common sense. This deferred this government grant you received why? Why did you receive this grant? Because you purchased a fixed asset or property plan and equipment. That means this is directly related to that. That PP is going to last in your business or you're going to use that PP for your business for how many years? Five years. That means this grant also will be deferred to PNL over. That's all. Initially, you park it in deferred income account and from deferred income, you transfer it to PNL over a period of five years. Why five years? Because useful life of the asset is 5 years. If the useful life of the asset is 3 years, then you will defer it over 3 years. That's okay. Sir, deferred income here you have credited. If you have to transfer this deferred income to PNL, means what's the journal entry? It has a credit balance. To transfer, we need to debit. So the next journal entry will be what, sir? Deferred income account debit to PNL account. Income, no. Income means PNL will get debited or credited. Credit. That's what we have done. Okay. Entire one second. Entire ten lakh. Huh? Entire ten lakh will you transfer to one day, one year PNL or over five years? Over five years. That means every year, how much will you transfer, sir? Two lakhs. At the end of first year, two lakh from deferred income account you will transfer it to PNL. Easy. Second year also, how much will you transfer? Two lakh. Third year also, two. Lakh. Fourth year also, fifth year also. By the end of fifth year, the deferred income account balance will become zero. Like that. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah, you're saying depreciation will not transfer. Oh, yeah, we'll transfer that. So next entry. But did we understand this, everybody? Uh, maybe we'll transfer of depre also. What's the journal entry for depreciation transfer, sir? PNL account debit to depreciation. How much depreciation you got here? 9 lakh, 9 lakh. Easy. Now, just check its impact. Sir, depreciation is an expense. Because of this expense, PNL got debited by how much? PNL got debited by? PNL got debited by 9 lakh. If year, I'm only doing year 1 analysis. Same thing goes for year 2 also. So, first year, PNL got debited by 9 lakh due to depreciation. So, this is your expense. That's all or we have some income also. We have some deferred income also which we transfer to PNL. Because of this deferred income, PNL got credited. How much in the first year? 2 lakh. So what is the net impact? PNL debit 9 lakhs. PNL credit 2 lakhs. So what is the net impact? Net net may if you compare, PNL has got debited by 7 lakh. In the previous method, what was the depreciation that you debited to PNL? 7 lakh. That means whether you do that method or this method, final impact on PNL is same. Just the way of different presentation is all. Okay. Uh, there was just given explanation, that's all. I mean, a couple of uh, why there was a need, it's very difficult to explain. But that information you will not get to know unless you are a standard setter. Because few things are rules. Every rule that is laid out, no, it's like asking me why the green means go in traffic. That will anybody of us know? Only person who has set up the rule will probably know. Every rule you will not know. Yes, some major rules we will also they'll give you explanation statement, but every rule. Only the people who are setting up that will know it. These are just a way of presentation. Maybe they thought that you have purchased the asset. So why to kind of touch the cost of the asset? Keep this as a separate presentation. So that means user will clearly get to know what is maybe the asset value. Could be their thought process. 
difficult to exactly pin down, pinpoint, maybe this is just my viewpoint. Could, or it could be something else also, which is a little difficult to totally comprehend that. Hmm? Sir, every standard solving accounting problem, huh? yeah. Accounts problem, costing problem, it will not solve. Yes. Wherever there was a need, they brought in office, correct. Standards are ever evolving, sir. They keep updating. Based on new, new things, they'll go on updating the standards and new, new things may come. But not as a rampant as your income tax changes. Okay, income tax changes left, right, center every time. Accounting standard changes are not that frequent. Like due to COVID, there was a lot of amendment which came, which was not applicable for you. All that came in. Yeah, in DSM, a lot of things came, which I had to do extra work. Okay. <laughs> Uh, uh, they were giving some clarifications, especially with respect to leases and all, but not a major change because they thought anyway, major companies where the changes were affected all were big, big companies. They were anyway following India, so they did not bring in over here. But anyways, uh, they can bring in here also. Slowly, slowly, all ASs also are getting amended and they're bringing on par with Indians. Slowly, it is changing. When finally it will get merged, we'll don't. Let's, if at all it get merged, no, not we'll see. AI can replace CA, oh, doubtful. Machine can never replace a human being. Sir. There will be some analysis role which everybody you need a human being. So don't worry about that role. Your job, your prospects are intact. Don't worry about that. You know. Yes. Okay. Okay. Did we understand this method now coming back to this? All right. So that's about your uh, deferred income method. Uh, oh, can we do... Uh, one more last concept is there. Uh, <laughs> what do I think of Narayan Murthy 70 hours a week? Huh? Doesn't work. See, work and all, no, it's, it increases productivity only when you do it with joy. If you're doing it forcefully, you know, it is no fun to. It is just like, see, I'm asking you to sit now. You're sitting for the <laughs> sake of it, right? It's, it's like that. At the end of the day, people... People who work in corporate now are working, most of them are working for the sake of money. So then it's a trade-off that they are doing. I will give this much of my time, you give me this much of money. So when you ask more time, obviously they will say, give me more money. And moreover, that much 70 hours and all, it's a little difficult. Not that it can't be pulled. In fact, we are all working that much now. But just saying it's too much. If you like it, it's all right. In fact, many practicing chartered accountants work, but they enjoy. My partner enjoys that. He's in, he specializes especially in income tax representations. Okay, he's quite famous. He gets a lot of CA firms approach him. But he enjoys that. He works till 11, 12 and all because he enjoys. So that way, he, for him, it's really not a problem. The same bugger when he was with corporate with Mino, he always used to pay TT, <laughs> full windows. He was hardly three, four works, three, four hours he used to work. But now he's full because he's enjoying that line of work. He says, it doesn't matter to me whether it is 11 hours or 12 hours. I'm happy with it. So it's okay. Like that. So it all depends on the way you are placed, what kind of work you are doing, do you connect with that, etc, etc. Okay. Anyways, uh, <laughs> that's all right. Now, many people are fan of uh, Narayan Murthy, sir. There's nothing wrong with that. But I'm just saying, those are all, just because a person is great, that doesn't mean that every view of his is great and it should be accepted by, by and large, by everybody. Yes. So that's all right. That's sir's opinion. Could be right, may not be right. But I don't fit into that category. That's all I can say. <laughs> okay, coming back to Breka. Can we do one extra concept and maybe one take up one question and then maybe figure it out? One last concept is that based on that, we have three questions and more or less the standard will come to. Yeah, all the things will be covered. Can we get to that? Somebody, what's your name, Da? Akash, our Akash Garu put one bomb initially only. What if grant becomes, if condition is violated? Yes, that scenario we call it as refund of government grant. So what if the government grant got refund? That is the next question. So again, I will not explain that concept directly. We can learn it with the help of question itself. Come to, no, sixth beta. Uh, one minute, hang on. Or maybe first we'll do eighth one and then we'll come back to the sixth one. Come back to the eighth one. Dude. Question number eight. Got that question? Uh, 
Okay. Unwillingly we got it, no? Mm -hmm. A limited purchased the machinery for 40 lakh. Useful life is 4 years. Residual value is 8. Government grant received is 16 lakh. Show the journal entry to be passed at the time of refund of grant in the third year and the value of fixed asset. So some conditions. Normally government grants come with some conditions. Okay, here maybe some of the conditions we have violated or breached. Hence, what does the government say? Give back the grant. Which year? In the third year. Okay. So they are saying in value of fixed assets under two circumstances. One, when the grant is credited to fixed assets. Sir, grant is credited to fixed asset means when you receive the grant, you will credit fixed asset account. Which method? First method is nothing but crediting the fixed asset means fixed asset has debit balance. If you credit it, its cost will reduce. That means indirectly they are telling this is which method? Asset cost reduction method. Yes, no. This is the first method that they are talking about. Second, when the grant is credited to deferred. They are only asking the journal entry at the time of refund. Refund is happening when? Third. We will not do that. We will do it from the beginning for our practice. Okay. So that we will know end to end. Okay. We will take this question. I know that is not the requirement. But for us, more than the question, we want to learn the concept. So we will do it from the beginning again once again. Question number 8. First, we will do it under, we can use the same name what they told, which is grant is credited to fixed asset. Grant is credited to fixed asset. That indirectly is what we call it as what sir? Asset cost reduction method. Okay, uh, sir, uh, grant got refunded here in which year? Third. So, that means we will do, the, can we present in the column of format itself? The particulars year one, year two, and finally year three. I think now you can copy 17 easily with me. Only in the third year, there's some extra drama, happen, drama happening in the form of refund. So first two years, maybe copy along with me. Third year, I'll explain, then you can copy. Okay, sir, first, PP you purchased by paying how much lakhs? 40 lakhs. So what's the journal entry? PP account debit to bank account. How much? 40 lakhs. Sir, you purchased the asset in all the three years or only in year one? Only in year one. So, journal, the first journal entry will come only in the year one column. Narration I will not write for the common things. I will only write for the refund. Would you be fine? Okay, next, sir. After you purchase the asset, what happened? You received the grant. How much grant did you receive? 16 lakh. What's the journal entry for grant received, sir? Bank account debit. How much? 16 lakh. Sir, which will you put it in deferred income account? Which method? Asset cost reduction method. So when you receive the grant, asset ka cost should reduce. Asset has debit balance. To reduce its cost, we have to credit it. So you will write what over here. To PP account, 16 lakh. Did you receive this grant in the second and third year also or only in the first year? Only in the first year. So this entry will come only in the year one column. Can we look into the next one? Okay, next entry will be for Depri. So the journal entry will be depreciation account debit to PP account. Same calculation. For the first two years, I will calculate. Third year, some parameter is getting changed. We'll see. For, for first two years, I think we can cancel. I mean, we can calculate. How much did you buy the fixed asset for, sir? 40 lakh. After purchasing, you received a grant of 16 lakh. And this 16 lakh of grant, you credited PP. When you credit PP, its carrying amount will reduce. So I should write 16 lakh minus or 40 lakh minus 16. Okay, sir. This is what now? 40 minus 16 will give you the carrying amount. 
minus what I have to do? Minus the residual value. In this case, the residual value happens to be 8 lakh. So again, reduce 8 lakh divided by life. Initially, the life was how many years? 4 years. So do 4 years. How much is that? So the depreciation for a first year is also 4 lakh. Second year is also 4. Third year, grant has got refunded. So I will not plug in the amount. The calculations will change, which I'll show you in a bit. Okay, now. And depreciation is an expense. Expense will be transferred off to p and So p and account debit to depreciation. First year and second year, the transfer entry will be for 4 lakh. Third year, we'll see. Yes, SLM method. Correct. If they don't mention the method, if they give useful life, useful life and residual value, always take it as what? Straight line method itself. If it is WDV, clearly they'll call it out. In fact, for WDV, we need a rate. And they will give you that rate and say it as WDV method. Okay, now. All right. Now, stop what you're doing. Check the screen. Till here, everybody has updated or you want me to wait? Check the screen, sir. Once again, I'll read out that point for you. Uh, show the journal entry to be passed at the time of refund of grant in the third year and the value of fixed. We will calculate the value of fixed asset in a bit. You need to pass the journal entry for refund of grant and that refund is happening which year? Third year. Okay. Come back, sir. When you received the grant, what entry did you pass? Under asset cost reduction method, when you received the grant, the journal entry you passed was bank account debit to PP account. Now, the grant is getting refund. Did they say refunded only to the extent of 10%, 50% or only 4 lakh, 3 lakh like that? They just said grant got refund. So, to what extent? Entire grant of 16 lakh has got refund. Yes, no? So, when you received it, you passed the journal entry bank to PP. When it is getting refunded, ULTA reverse entry, which will be what, sir? PP account debit to bank. That is a journal entry for refund of grant under asset cost reduction method. Easy. Once more, got it. So the journal entry will be PP account debit to, to bank account. Okay. Which year this entry will come? First year, second year, or only third year? You are refunding this grant only in the third year. Okay. So that means this entry will come for third year. And how much amount? Entire 16 lakh grant we are refunding. So, this entry will come for 16 lakh. Any problem, people? No, so, the narration, if you want, you can write it over here. Being grant. Being grant refunded. Okay. Stop again, people. Just look at the screen. Sir, when you receive the grant under this method, what happened to your cost of the asset? Or what happened to your carrying amount? When you receive the grant, your cost or your carrying amount of the asset reduced. When you refund, what will happen? Carrying amount will increase. Sir, if carrying amount changes, meaning because of this carrying amount is increasing. So, obviously it is changing. If carrying amount is changing means will depreciation be same as sir? Depreciation obviously will change. In fact, if carrying amount is increasing, means depreciation also will increase. So, hence we can't take third year depre as 4 lakh. We need to calculate. I'll show this as a working note number 1 here. Is that okay with you? So, I'll call it as working note number 1. Depreciation for year 3. If you want for all the years depreciation calculation, you can put it up as a separate working note. For year 1 and year 2, this is the calculation. For year 3, this is the calculation. Like that also you can present your choice. Hmm? Okay, first, observe, observe. I'll give you time to write. If this is important. There could be some mistakes that could happen here. So, we are calculating depreciation for the year 3. Can you tell me what is the carrying amount of PP at the beginning of year 3? At the beginning of year 3. Okay, first check here. One by one. Don't have to do things. Everything is there in your journal entries. If you overthink, it will be a problem. Check. Just check the screen. You purchase PP for what value? 40 lakhs. Okay, now listen, listen, listen. No need for anything. Just check the screen. Don't deviate. Otherwise, you'll keep asking how, how, and stop and check. You bought PPE for 40 lakhs. When you received the grant, you credited PPE by 16 lakhs. That means its carrying amount got reduced because in the first year only you reduced it by 16 lakhs. Oh, this is one. 
sir you want carrying amount at the beginning of year 3 that means 2 years is already passed for 2 years you have already calculated or charged depreciation when you charge depreciation you credited pp you know first year by 4 lakh second year again by 4 lakh so due to depreciation carrying amount will be same or it will reduce it will reduce due to first year it got reduced by 4 lakh again in the second year it got reduced by 4 lakh so this is your carrying amount what about salvage value salvage value is considered for depreciation calculation will you consider it for carrying amount huh? no so carrying amount is this how much is this sir? 16 lakh any doubt once confirm this then we will proceed further online Padafat, padafat. Oh, sir, this is your carrying amount. So, can we calculate depreciation? How do you get depreciation under SLM method again, sir? Carrying amount minus residual value divided by life or remaining useful. Remaining UL can I write as in useful life. So, depreciation for which year onwards? From year 3 onwards. What is the carrying amount now? 16 lakh. Is there any change in the residual value or that is still the same? Same. How much is the residual value, sir? Residual value is still 8 lakh. So, that there is no change. 8 lakh only. So, when you purchase the asset, useful life was 4 years. Now, we are in year 3 beginning. So, that means 2 years is already passed. Correct, no? So, the remaining useful life is 2 years. How much is this? So, if you calculate it, this will be 4 lakh. I don't know. You told the number. Correct. Huh? Oh, one, one, one. Actually, actually, one minute. Oh, correct, correct, correct. One, one, I missed out. Hang on, hang on. I think this is fine. Don't copy this. Hang on. I'll bring this down. Yeah, one component I missed out. Sorry. Okay. One by one, it's coming up. Yeah, okay. what is this? Go in there. Okay. Here, yeah, path. Ah, don't, don't need to throw things. If you don't want it, I told you, you can give it to me. I'll take it. Okay. All right. One minute. One component I missed out. My bad. Okay, the carrying amount is how much, sir? 16 lakh. In fact, grant got uh, grant got refunded. When you, when grant got refunded, what is the journal entry you passed? PP account debit. PP account debit to bank account. So PP has debit balance. Again, if you debit, its balance will increase. So what should you write here? Add grant refunded. How much is the grant refunded, sir? 16. Okay, now. So, when you receive the grant, carrying amount of the asset reduced. When you refunded the grant, carrying amount will increase. This is the point. That means what will be your revised carrying amount, sir? Revised carrying amount of at the beginning of year 3 will be how much? At the beginning of year 3 will be 32 lakhs. Now, calculate depreciation. It should be fine. How much will be depreciation? Carrying amount is 32 lakh. Minus salvage value. Salvage value is still 8 lakhs divided by remaining useful life. When you bought it, useful life was 4 years. 2 years is already passed. So, the remaining useful life is 2 years. So, that means how much will be this? So, depreciation from, from which year onwards? From year 3 onwards. Meaning for year 3 and year 4, you will charge depreciation that much. Okay, now. Any problem? So, can I update the journal entry now? The journal entry for depreciation in year 3 column, we will write 12 lakhs. Okay, and this we will write in bracket. This is as per working note number 1. And how much depreciation will you transfer to PNL? If depreciation is 12, you will transfer 12 lakhs to PNL. That's the fun. Now, you are free to copy whatever that you want to copy. Working note only, huh? Got that mistake I committed? Don't do that in exam. Ah, to show you that only we did mistake. <laughs> cover up, cover up, Asar. Mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Others who are done with this method can try the next one, at least for the first two years. Hmm? Done with copying, huh? Oh. Ah, uh, journal entry, huh? Third journal entry. Mm. Just the amount. That's all. Everybody have finished it? Problem over or one method over? One method. 
come back to the chart and see if the wording makes sense to you know sir when you if you are following asset cost reduction method when you receive the grant cost of the asset will reduce so depreciation also will reduce when you receive the grant when the same grant got refunded or if the grant gets refunded what will happen to the cost of the asset cost of the asset will increase accordingly depreciation also will increase. making sense okay in in this problem also same thing earlier the in fact the because where which question is this one? before grant got refunded carrying amount was 16 lakh after the carrying amount or refund grant got refunded carrying amount became 32 lakh meaning carrying amount increased for first two years depreciation was only 4 lakh after the grant got refunded depreciation became 12 lakh, meaning again depreciation increased okay now all right so let's go for the second method now hmm? Sir, as the grant is refunded, won't the depreciation change for the first two years? No. Because grant is getting refunded in which year? Third year. That means carrying amount will only change in the third year. And moreover, depreciation is an accounting policy or accounting estimate. Depreciation is an accounting estimate. Estimate change, do you do retrospective accounting or prospective? All accounting estimates are accounted only prospectively. So this particular grant has got refunded only the third year. So, the data only in the third year will get changed. Previously, whatever you have done remains unaffected. Okay. All right. Next method. Next is the same thing. Instead of asset cost reduction method, what if you had followed? Deferred income method. Same data, but under that method. So, question number 8. This is under case B. Case B, what are we following? Deferred income method. In fact, uh, one minute, what is the requirement of the question, sir, by the way? Did they ask this whole thing or only refund? Refund. Refund, ka, what is the entry? PP account debit to. That's all they asked. In fact, they also asked the value of the asset. Can you tell me what is the value of the asset? Here, maybe we'll write here. Carrying amount at the end of year three, can you write? Because that also they asked. What is the value of the PP? In fact, that was the requirement of the question. No? Calculate the uh, journal entry to be passed and also the value of fixed assets. What will be the value of the fixed asset after depreciation? Sir? In fact, uh, here, once the grant has become refunded, carrying amount is 32 lakh. After you charge depreciation, what will be the carrying amount at the end of year 3? At the end of year 3, carrying amount will be 32 lakh minus 12 lakh, which is 20 lakh. So, the question is not very clear. They only asked value of fixed asset. Whether they ask value of fixed asset after refunding the grant or after charging depreciation they are not given so both we have calculated let examiner pick whatever he wants okay now huh. no not asked no. they asked only the entry for refund and uh, they passed carrying on in fact have you passed the entry here we are following columnar approach no? for columnar approach we will not pass entry individually right hmm? They did not ask, but we still did. Okay, coming back to this question now. Which method, sir? Deferred income method. Same format, particulars. Year 1, year 2, and year 3. Ah, well, manamana, 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 they're doing. Don't know. Da. If you ask me, I'll tell you only. Can I start? Okay, first, sir, you purchase PP for what value? 40 lakh. From the beginning, same entries. PP account debit to bank account. How much value, sir? 40 lakh, sir. Will this entry come in year 2 and year 3, sir? No, sir. Then, did you receive grant, sir? How much grant, sir? 16 lakh. So, if you received it, so the journal entry will be? Bank account debit 16 lakh to which account? To PPE account or deferred income account? To deferred income account. How much sir? 16. You receive grant in multiple years or only in year 1? Only in year 1. So that entry will come only in the year 1 call. Is it PSDI? Now, any, any other drama happened in year 1 in year 2 or everything normal? So, have you used the asset? Yes. So, will depre come? Yes. So, the journal entry will be depreciation account debit to PP account. 
What will be depreciation, sir? 40 lakh is the carrying amount. Can I reduce the 16 lakh of grant? No. Are we following asset cost reduction method or deferred income method? Since we are following deferred income method, we will not credit PP. Rather, you park it in another account called deferred income account. So, carrying amount is still 40 lakh minus salvage value. What is the salvage value? 8 lakhs divided by useful life, which is 4 years. How much is that? So, the depreciation for first year as well as for second year will be 8. Actually, third year also it is 8 lakh, but anyway, nonetheless, if you have got it, you will understand it, otherwise it is fine. Uh, fine, otherwise we will prove it to you later. So far, good. 2 years, okay. No? So, depreciation for 2 years, where will be transfer to? p and account. So, the transfer entry is p and account debit to depreciation 8 lakh, 8 lakh for the first 2 years. Third year, we will see it later. That's all or one more? Sir, you have parked, whatever grant you have received, you parked it now. Deferred income account. Will it stay in that deferred income forever? No. You will transfer from deferred income to p and Over what? Over that this grant is related to asset. No. And the asset is going to last in the business for how many years? Since the useful life of the asset here is 4 years, this grant income or this deferred income also will be transferred to p and over 4 years. So, what will be the transfer entry of this deferred income? You have credited deferred income. So, to transfer what we need to do? debit so the journal entry will be deferred income account debit to p and l account. how much sir you have received a deferred income of 16 lakh you will transfer or your defer this over four years so the first year you will transfer four lakh second year also you will transfer four lakh third year beginning the grant has got refund so will this entry come for third year no, since that has got refunded, this entry will not come. Some other entry will arise, which we will pass. Uh, next, sir, uh, this is for the first two years' ka drama. In the year three, what happened? Grant got refunded. Check which method, sir? Deferred income method. Sir, when you received the grant, what entry did you pass? Bank to deferred income. Yes. So, when this grant got refunded, what entry you need to pass? The ULTA entry, which will be? When you receive it is bank to deferred income means when you refund it will be ULTA which is deferred income account debit. Hang on, don't copy. Deferred income account debit to, to bank account. Okay, now which year? Year 1, year 2 or year 3? At beginning of year 3, the grant is getting refunded. So, how much money you need to pay back to the government? 16. So, bank you will credit to the extent of? 16. I believe that there is no problem. Yes. But, 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 but. Deferred income, can I debit to the extent of 16 lakh? No. Why? <laughs> Sir, initially when you received the grant, deferred income had a credit balance of 16. Okay. So, if it had a 16 lakh balance means, you can close that by debiting to the extent of 16. But hang on. Every year you are transferring deferred income also to PM. So, check here for your reference only it is not required things so initially deferred income had a credit balance of when the grant got received deferred income had a credit balance of 16 lakh i'm just looking at the journal entry and covering this okay no now at the end of first year what did you do you wrote deferred income account debit to p and l account how much for deferred income had a credit balance so if you debit it its balance will reduce so, you did deferred income debit at the end of first year, which is 4 lakh. This is in year 1. Again, in year 2, you did deferred income account debit how much? 4 lakh. That means, do we have 16 lakh balance in deferred income or a lot lesser? So, check what is the balance in deferred income account. Balance in deferred income account at the beginning of year 3, can I write? At the beginning of year 3, when the grant got refunded, its balance was? 16 lakh you have credited, 4 and 4 you have credited, debited means its balance is 8 lakh credit. Am I right in saying so? Sir, if it has only 8 lakh balance, can you debit it by 16 lakh? Huh? No, it has only 8 lakh credit balance means you will debit this deferred income only to the extent of 8. Any doubt? So, you will debit deferred income to the extent of 8 lakh. Is the journal entry matching? 
You have debited deferred income by 8 lakh, but credited bank by 16 lakh. What is the differential value? 8 lakh. Where did this 8 lakh of deferred income get transferred to? This deferred income got transferred to P and L. So for this 8 lakh balancing figure, what will you use? P and L. Okay, now this is arrived as what? Balancing. How 8 lakh? First year you have transferred 4 lakh to P and L. Second year also again you have transferred 4. Hence the balance is 8 lakh in P and L. This is the journal entry for grant. This is the journal entry for grant refunded. Okay, people. Everyone understood this so? You can treat it. You can treat this as an extraordinary item. Grant getting refundable, you can treat it as extraordinary. It depends, but in my opinion, this should be extraordinary. Yes, because this and all is not so regular. Occurrence. You can treat it as extraordinary. Huh. However, left, right, center, you're receiving grant and uh, company is refunding means then it may also become a exceptional also. But generally, I think you should put this under extraordinary. Uh, yes, they're saying good. Uh, one minute. Just check, sir. When grant got refunded, did I debit or credit p &L anywhere here? When grant got refunded, did I debit or credit uh, p and Sorry, did I credit or debit PP, property plan and equipment anywhere here? That means under deferred income method, when you receive the grant also, PP value will not get affected. When you refund the grant also, PP value will not get affected. That means if all parameters are same, means third year depreciation also will be same. So hence you can write depreciation for third year also is 8 lakh. Because even if you calculate, the answer will be same. You want me to calculate and show? Okay. Under this method, when you receive and refund, PP remains unaffected. So, depreciation will not get affected under this method. Okay, sir. So, uh, that's what uh, I've written in the chart. Check here. Now, see if that makes sense to you. If you follow deferred income method, then the cost and depreciation of the asset will not get affected. Because whatever, when you receive the grant, you'll park it in deferred income. Method. That's the reason. When you receive also, cost and depreciation will not get Perfected. And grant income will be amortized to p &L over the useful life. Yes, that's the first point. And however, if the grant gets refunded, if the grants gets refunded, then what you have to do? Cost and depreciation, will it change or not change? The carrying amount of the PP as well as depreciation of PP will still be the same. Okay, now that will not get affected due to this refund. However, what you have to do for the deferred government grant? Can you still show it or close it? Close it. So, what is the journal entry here? Sir? Same journal entry I've quoted here. When grant gets refunded, the journal entry is deferred government grant account debit to the extent of how much our balance it has to bank account. For the balancing figure, you will use P and L. So, first close off deferred government grant account and for the balance amount, use P and L. That's all. Now, whatever wordings is making sense of any problem? No. Last aspect is the disclosure, sir. First, disclose what is the nature of grant you have received, whether you have received monetary grant non-monetary grant, etc, etc. What is that nature you disclose? And what is the amount of grant you have received disclosed? And what is the accounting method that you have adopted? Meaning, have you followed asset cost reduction method or deferred income method? Those were the disclosures you give. That should be good. Okay, sir. So, this is all the concepts we have covered. I think we still do have a couple of questions. So, we will take a break and then we shall...